Hi, welcome to a quick overview of Dungeon Painter Studio features. This application allows you to create encounter maps using Ready Textures grouped to tile sets. You can switch between tile sets using this drop down. Tile set may contain several thematic subfolders, and you can quickly change current texture by scrolling and holding the Ctrl key. You can also change the size of previews using this slider and buttons. Most tools are associated with a certain type of texture, therefore they are grouped according to this feature. First of all, we should be focusing on ground and floor tools. So let's start. You can draw rectangles, ellipses, polygons, paddles, and use a terrain brush. Each object generates a layer that you can see in the right hand side panel. Each layer has an edit button. Let me show you how it works. When you're in the editing mode, you can see the control points of the edited figure. For the rectangle, there are only two. You can drag them. By clicking the texture, you will change the fill of the shape. To change the texture quickly, you can scroll with clipped control button. It works the same way with the ellipse. You can change texture settings, scale, rotation and shift. Editing the polygon. You can move, delete and duplicate its vertices. In addition, polygons have a jagged option. It can come in handy when drawing caves and shorelines. In paddles, you can change the line smoothness and outline blurriness. Finally, using the brush you can paint and erase strokes. Let's check out some more options. Move tool is one of the most frequently used functions. With its help you can move one or more layers. To select an additional layer, hold Ctrl key and hit it. In this mode you can mirror or merge shapes. As you can see now, this is a single figure. This tool allows you to select objects within a rectangle. You can use Shift to select an additional area and press Alt if you want to deselect. Rotation tool is a point around which the selected objects will be rotated, and if you like, you can also drag it. You can rotate objects by pressing the left mouse button or by using toolbar buttons. This tool allows you to resize shapes. Now let's move on to walls. Everything is simple. You can draw segments, polylines and arcs. In fact, these tools are very rarely used. Soon you will find out why. With objects, everything is also quite simple. You can change the size and rotate by 90 degrees by pressing a spacebar. Sometimes you need to place an object without grid snapping. Here's where you can switch it off. Lines are also quite simple. Polylines and splines, they're great for drawing rivers and roads on world maps. The text is also simple. And of course, you can also edit all these objects. Now, a few words about layers and groups. You can gather several layers into one group, making it become a single hall. But if you enter it, you will see the layers so you can edit or move them. You can give a group or layer a meaningful name just by double clicking it and typing a name. You can also export the group to a separate file. Right click on the group and select context action. You can also import DPS files one into another. Remember I said that the walls instrument are very rarely used. Now I will explain why. Usually when creating dungeons we start with the fill. Draw a small dungeon. Now merge all the shapes and add the walls in one click. There you go. Perhaps you didn't choose the wall texture and now maybe you want to change it as it has been shown earlier. Well, it's possible in the editing mode. 
but you can make it even easier. Just select the layer, right click on the preview of the texture and choose to fill selected. This technique also works with several figures and groups. Our walls lack shadows. Move to the Effects tab and apply a long shadow. Let's see what it consists of. Now, it's a combination of two filters. You can add something else if you feel like it. All changes that you make to the filter are immediately applied, and you can see the result. DPS contains several presets, and you can also create new ones and save them to the effects library. If you want to make your effects library set by default, save it to DPS folder over default effects library. So, let's move on to experts. Let's start with PNG. DPS determines the size of the map based on coordinates of control points of our figures. To ensure the walls are not trimmed, draw a rectangle that will accurately set the boundaries of the map. Move it on the bottom layer, and if you don't want it to be visible on the expert, set its transparency to zero. You can also change the area by dragging these green corners. DPS shows the size of the received map and adds them to the image name. There are some options related to the grid, coordinates and background. You can also change map's resolution by setting custom values in the slider, or choose the resolution of one of the popular virtual tables. Export to PDF shows how the map will be placed on pages. You can choose the paper and cell size. In this tab, you can change the type of grid, lines color and background. And it also shows page guides on canvas. Templates allow you to import a sketch, adjust its dimensions and paint over it. The second feature is the import of maps generated in Dungeon. Open it and generate a map. Now import it into DPS and you're good to go. If the map is large, scroll in to zoom and press the right mouse button to pan the canvas. Now, DPS contains more than 500 quality textures, but sometimes you just need something special. So now I'll show you how to add custom textures. Create a new folder and give it a name. Now add texture. When importing a texture, its type is recognized in the current tool. When importing, you can choose the size of the texture in the units to make it look more proportional. Apart from adding your textures, you can use tile sets from Steam Workshop. To do this, you will need to subscribe to tile set using Steam Client. Wait for it to download. You will then see the progress at the bottom of the Steam Client. Now you can install and use it. I talked about most of the DPS functionality, although obviously that's not all. I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial. Good luck and happy map making!